Shall we pray? Father in heaven, I want to thank you for how you bless this service to this point. And now I, I am thankful, too, that you will stay here. I want you to use me to be a blessing in spite of my faults and shortcomings, that we could see Emmanuel and hear his voice, and it would change our lives. So sink, Lord, this sermon into the baptism, the scripture reading, the special music, every phase, so that we will know that you're alive and well, and you do take care of your people. So bless in Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Jay got a brand new job. And because of it, he realized, I better get a, a different car. Mine is not very reliable. I don't want to lose this job. It was a good job. And so he went online. He went to a sp specific website, and he's looking around for a used car. And he was in, doing this for about an hour, trying to figure out what to do, when all of a sudden up popped a advertisement that hadn't been there before, and it said, Toyota Corolla. Good condition, low mileage, 2,000 or 20,016, uh, a real good buy. And then it quoted the price on there. And he's thinking, wow, that's right around my price. This just got on there. I better call right away and make an appointment before someone else gets this car. And so he made that appointment and he canceled everything else that he had to do in preparation for his new job, and he got in his old banger, and he drove to see this car in good condition. And you got to turn on the thing. Thank you. All right. No. He looked at it. He thought, that's not what the ad said. This couldn't be the car you advertised. And he was downright angry that he went through all of that to come and find out that it was a deceptive message to begin with. And you know, so it is when it comes to Christian life. We expect appearance to match the portrayal. And when it doesn't, we're disappointed and discouraged. And so that's the way it is in the Christian life. And we should all realize that it's not unreasonable to ask for consistency in that area of Christianity also. And so we've been looking at the series which is entitled The Whole Armor of God. And we discovered the whole armor of God is listed in Ephesians. I invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me there. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And let's look at this as we want to understand we expect the appearance to match the portrayal as Christians, especially Seventh-day Adventist Christians, especially as Paradise Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Okay, turn to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Boys and girls, do you have your Bible? Open it to Ephesians 6. Follow along as we read this. This is the whole armor of God. That's how it's titled in its a beautiful section of Scripture. And here's what it says, starting with verse 10. Are you there? Are you with me? Are you awake? All right. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavens, heavenly places. 
Therefore, take on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And so we see the list here, the armor of God. It's the helmet, the breastplate, the belt, the shield, the sword, the shoes. And then number seven, which we'll get to. And part one was, stand your ground. And let's take a look at the first four verses of this section of Scripture. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Stand against what? Wiles of the devil, implying if you don't have on the whole armor of God, you're not going to stand. But notice what he As Paul goes on in verse 13, therefore take on the whole armor of God. Paul, you just said that. Well, this must really be important. That you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. And then at verse 14 starts with stand therefore. Folks, stand your ground. Four times in five verses, Paul writes stand implying that that will be our test. And the only way we can stand is with the whole armor of God. Then we looked at part two last weekend, stand for the truth. Uh, The belt in Ephesians 6, 14, stand therefore having girded your waist with the truth. And we discovered that your waist, of course, right here in the middle of your body, you have to be surrounded by what? truth, not error. And now today is part three. It's entitled The Heart of the Matter. And we're going to look at the breastplate as the last part of verse 14 says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. We're going to look first of all at the word and uh, the words. Then we're going to look at the purpose and then we're going to look at the meaning. Are you ready? So let's look at the words first. Part one, the words. Having put on, endusomanos, that's the the Greek verb. It means to clothe or be clothed with in the sense of sinking into a garment. You got having put on the breastplate. And by the way, um, that word breastplate, Believe it or not, in the Greek is thorax. And that's just what we call the chest, the thorax. Or a corslet or a breastplate. And by the way, if the kids look at 1 Samuel 17, 5, well, let me ask you Bible scholars, how much did Goliath's breastplate weigh? <laughs> <laughs> a real lot, right? Well, it's funny, you go on the internet, I got three different answers, but it was all above 150 pounds. That's how big that dude was. And he had that breastplate. It was made of mail, which is chain link. And then over it, they would put metal, and the metal would be somewhat jointed so that they would have some mobility. And then we look at the word righteousness. This is a very familiar and interesting Greek noun. It means equality of character or act, especially Christian justification righteousness. Righteousness, first of all, of action, Duty, what is right? Secondly, 
righteousness of disposition, kindness, graciousness, liberality. Thirdly, regard for God and his divine law. Ooh, I'm going to slow down here for a sec. You know what righteousness really means? Doing the right thing. Do we always do the right thing? Or are there certain circumstances or situations when we don't do the right thing? Remember, if you're going to go look for a car and you want a fairly decent one and you show up and find out you've been duped, it makes people angry. Christians are no different. They are to have the breastplate of righteousness, right doing. Is it always the easiest thing to do right? Is it always easy to do right? No, it isn't. Ah, but if you got the belt of truth on also, there's assistance from the Lord. And so let's take a look really quick here at a couple of other texts, really. Look what it says in Isaiah. For he put on the righteousness of the breastplate. Now, if you go to Isaiah 59 and read the context, guess who the he is? The Messiah. The Messiah put put on the breastplate of righteousness. Take a look at 1 Thessalonians 5.8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the what? Of what? Yeah, faith and truth. Notice that Paul, in the letter to Thessalonica, he put down that the breastplate is a symbol of faith and love. Uh, We'll look at that a little more in a second. And then we turn to 1 John 3, 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is what? They're righteous. Just as he is righteous. Who's the he again? Jesus. So as we look at these different parts of the the armor, the Bible says put on the whole armor of God, and we saw that repeated twice, and we need to stand, in order to stand, we got to have our whole bodies girded with truth, and our breastplate of righteousness. So let's check this out. What is the purpose of the breastplate? Number A, it covers the body from the neck to the thighs, the front and the back. Okay, nothing new here. It's made of rings, scales, or of plates so fastened together to be flexible and yet guard the body from the sword, the spear, and the arrow. And remember, put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand against the darts of Satan. Stand in that evil day. And so this has to be flexible, but it guards against those darts that are coming at you. Your righteousness, doing the right thing, even when it's hard, protects you and makes you able to stand. Oh, yes, and by the way, it protects the vital organs, the heart, the lungs, the liver, etc., by the way, if you took the time, mark this, 1 Kings 22, 34. This is where Jehoshaphat got duped into going to war with Ahab. And when they were in that battle, Ahab disguised himself from being the king. And, of course, the enemy went after Jehoshaphat. And somehow they realized, wait a minute, that's not Ahab. In the meantime, they were looking for him 
an errant arrow came flying and caught Ahab in one of the joints of his armor, and he bled to death. He did not have the breastplate of righteousness, folks. And he was fair target to Satan's arrows. And the purpose of the breastplate is to protect the vital organs, especially to, whoops, went the wrong way, especially to protect the heart. So what's the meaning of all this? Remember I said we look at the words, we'll, we'll look at the purpose. Now let's look at the meaning. Well, look what the Bible says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. By the way, when I... Uh, well, wait, uh, did I propose to you or did you propose to me? I can't remember. <laughs> what did I say to Jenny? I love you with all my kidneys, <laughs> right? Or if you're an intellectual, I loved you with all my brain. We don't say that. I love you with all my heart. The heart is the center of the emotions of the body the breastplate protects your emotions. Absolutely vital. In fact, check this out. Look at um, Exodus 28, verse 15 through 21. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embellish this idea of loving God with all your heart and loving your neighbor as yourself. Take a look. Turn to Exodus 28. Now here in Exodus 28, we're going to find the description of the uniform that the high priest wore. Exodus 28, we're going to start with verse 15. Look what it says. Do you have it? Amen. Children, did you go to Exodus? you like this. This is very colorful. It says here, you shall make a, bless, a breastplate of judgment, artistically woven according to the workmanship of the ephod. You shall make it of gold, purple, blue, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen you shall make it. It shall be doubled into a square, a span shall be its length, and a span shall be its width, and you shall put settings of stones in it. Four rows of stone. The first row shall be sardas, a topaz, an emerald. This shall be the first row. The second row shall be turquoise, sapphire, and diamond. And the third row, jacinth, agate, and amethyst. And the fourth row, beryl, and onyx, and jasper. They shall be set in glory, a golden setting, and the stones shall have the name of the sons of Israel. Twelve according to their names, like the engraving of an insignet. Each one with its own name, they shall be according to the twelve tribes. Now, friends, to me, this is incredible. I, I know you probably can't see this. But here's a representation of the stones that are, were on the ephod of the high priest. And on each stone was a name of one of the tribes of Israel. And by the way, you can try as hard as you might with your Bible, and concordance, dictionary, whatever. And many, not many, but uh, 
A goodly number of these stones are not sure what it meant. I mean, like it, it, there were two different kinds of emeralds and turquoise, and some said it was this, some said it was that, but that's a basic idea. But what's really interesting to me, folks, what's really interesting to me is the names of the 12 tribes were written. And so it goes on to say, so shall Aaron, the high priest, bear the names of the sons of Israel on the breastplate of judgment over his what? Over his heart. When he goes into the holy place, a memorial before the Lord, how often? Continually. That's that word, tamid. That's the word in Daniel that they translate daily sacrifice. And the word sacrifice isn't there. That word daily is the word tamid, which is continually. The high priest goes in before the Lord with your name on his heart because he loves you. And the proof of loving you is he came and died for you. It doesn't matter how bad you may be. You are loved. And every time the high priest went to burn the incense in the evening, in the morning, before the, the Ark of the Covenant covered by a veil, he would stand there and my name is written on one of those stones continually bringing me into the presence of God. The breastplate of righteousness is to protect your emotions and to also guide you into the right steps to really be truthful and honest and, and who you really are. And then it goes on to say this, and you shall put on the breastplate of judgment, on the breastplate of judgment, the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be over Aaron's what? Heart. And when he goes before the Lord, so Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel over his heart before the Lord. How often? Continually. Jesus is our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. And I don't care how you interpret this. My name is on one of those stones over his heart because I am the object of his affection. Amen. So we look at the breastplate and we just think of this massive or cumbersome or bulky but very heavy metal thing that that protects you from the internal organs, but now we find out spiritually it's to protect your emotions and to guide you to make the right decisions just the way Jesus looks at it. Look at this. Then you shall take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel six of them on the name on one stone, six of the name on the other stone, in order of their birth. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but on this representation, there's the shoulder onyx stone in, embedded in a gold leaf. And on one shoulder, it has the six tribes. The other shoulder has the six tribe according to their birth. And so when we get to verse 12, it says, and you shall put the two stones of the shoulder of the ephod as memorial stones for the son of Israel, so Aaron shall bear their name before the Lord on his two shoulders as a memorial. So folks, give your burdens to Jesus. He is taking our judgment, our lives, and putting them on his shoulder and over his heart. When we look at the high priest and the 
garments that he was directed to wear speak of a, of a savior that just is beyond our understanding. That's how important this breastplate is. Take a look at this. Hebrews 7, 25, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. How many of you went on a vacation recently? How many of you sleep during the night occasionally? Our Savior never goes to bed. Our, our Savior never takes a vacation. There, there's no break for him. Why? Because the one important thing to the Lord is mine and your salvation. Amen. He ever liveth to make intercession. That means he's forever before the throne of God pleading our case, presenting our prayers because we're on his heart. Well, I'm just about done here, but I got to get to this. Notice Deuteronomy, he found him in a desert place, talking about Israel. He called it a wasteland and a howling wilderness. That's where he found Israel. And what did he do? He encircled Israel. He instructed Israel. And he kept him as the what? The apple of his eye. And then Zechariah says this, he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. Okay, sounds good. You have a general idea. Let me embellish it. The Hebrew word for apple means the pupil. The pupil happens to be the center of the eye. And God looks at us as the center of his eye. We are the focus of his attention. Not even our behavior can turn his face from us. And by the way, I'm not advocating sin here. In fact, it's just the opposite. When we realize what Jesus goes through every second of every day, 24 hours a day, 365 plus days a year for my salvation, it's to spur me on to want the breastplate of righteousness and to do the right thing, even when I don't want to do it. This is powerful, isn't it? And so, folks, the Paradise Seventh-day Adventist Church, a fellowship of love. Is it? Are we? Look what the Bible says. John 13, 35, by this they will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. 1 John 4, 20, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he sees, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Amen. Oh, friends, I desire, and I don't always succeed to be a pastor that loves whoever comes to me no matter what. And by the way, there are people who do not like me. I mean, that's just the way it is. But my job is not to decide who likes me and who doesn't. My calling, my ministry, my privilege is to love everybody no matter what. And love means that if they need something, we're there for them. Even if we'd consider them, in the human sense, our enemy. Oh, that the Paradise Church and the pastors and the elders and the deacons and the deaconesses would love everyone. 
be kind, be thoughtful. Remember, righteousness means equity. Equity in action, equity in, in emotions, in, in caring and thoughtful and kind, even for those who attack you. I mean, Jesus goes like this. Check this out. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. I'm telling you, at that point, I would have looked for an AK-47 to strafe the whole group, but not Jesus. And so we see we've got to be surrounded by the truth. We have to know our Bibles and have a daily relationship with Jesus. We must wear the breastplate of righteousness to protect our emotions so that they are godly. And people will know that we are his disciples when we love one another. Oh, Father, we thank you for your counsels found in your book, the Bible. And I pray, Lord, that you would all help us to spend time in it every day, no matter how hurried our life is. I also want to thank you that whoever's here and say, well, that's nice, preacher, and for the prophets or somebody else, that's good, but I'm, I'm a terrible sinner. Well, I'll tell you, Jesus said, I came to save sinners. And there's nobody you can't save. And Paradise Church wants to be there to fight for every soul that makes an effort. Help us, Lord. Send the Spirit. Don't let anybody leave today without making some sort of decision. Whatever needs to be transpired between you and them, you speak to them, even right now during this prayer, through the Holy Spirit, so that no one will leave without making a decision. So blessed to this end, and thank you. You never fail, because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.